Hey, it's me, Bobby Daily 3, and this is my fastest video of Super Mario 64 vs. Banjo Kazooie. That's right, I'm tackling two more Nintendo 64 titles, this time platformers. Now, it's no secret that Banjo Kazooie took inspirations from Super Mario 64, but rarely managed to change the formula and made it its own unique game. But is it better than the original? Let's find out. Let's talk gameplay first. Super Mario 64 have all of Mario movesets at the start, except for the power ups, which I get to momentarily. Mario has all sorts of jumps for attacks and getting to platforms, which I feel that it gives the player a lot of freedom to complete their objective the way they want to, either the straightforward way like Nintendo tend to, or you can get a little bit creative. Now, Mario's main goal is to collect the power stars by completing certain missions. Now, to be fair, even though you have to select a mission, you can do another objective and pretty much skip that mission altogether, but sometimes you are locked into a mission. Like Womp's Fortress, for example, although you can still complete other objectives, you must um, destroy King Womp in order to get the other objective to make a building appear. Now, most of Banjo Kazooie's moveset are there from the start, but you have to talk to Bottles the Mole to get the rest of them, which I think it's a nice way to keep the game from being repetitive, but it's a kind of a bummer that you don't have all of them at the start like Super Mario 64 does. Not only the moveset helps you with platforming, but there are also abilities like shooting eggs, invincibility, and flying. Mario 64 also has some of these abilities like flying and invincibility thanks to the power cap, but you must unlock them by finding these secret areas and hitting the power switch. Banjo Kazooie also has transformation that turns them into different animals and things, but they're only used for exploration mainly. Most of them doesn't even have an attack, with the exception of the alligator, and the other abilities even worth missioning, which maybe except for the bee, which has unlimited flying. The levels in Super Mario 64 are short and more compact compared to the one in Banjo Kazooie. There are still interesting places to explore, like finding hidden levels in Peach's castle, and having areas added to a level like the tower and rock fortress and that ship in that one area when you do a certain mission. But some of the level feels incomplete. Now, to be fair, Super Mario 64 is one of the first few 3D games on a console, so I feel like this is Nintendo's choice to keep the levels short and easy, so players won't get too lost in a relatively new genre. Like I said earlier ago, Banjo Kazooie levels are bigger by comparison. The world feels more complete and feels like actual places you can go to compared to Super Mario 64 which seems like part of a world. Crinkers Cabin is probably the best example of explaining how great the levels are in this game. There's lots of interesting places to explore, like underneath the water through all the pipes, inside a mechanical shark, and even up above the level. Now again, I know it's kind of unfair comparing this game to Mario 64, which not only is one of the first of its kind, but also was kind of rushed by Nintendo to try to make it a launch title, therefore they couldn't expand upon any more. But Banjo Kazooie took what they have and made it bigger and Possibly better. Now, keep in mind, I am taking the account of, you know, Super Mario 64 release date and, you know, Banjo Kazooie as well. So, I'm going to try to keep this versus video as fair as possible. The graphics in Super Mario 64 didn't age too well, and while on the topic of things not aging well, the camera also takes some getting used to by now. Now, at the beginning, I, I can remember having lots of fun with Super Mario 64 and you know, being pretty comfortable with the camera, but playing it nowadays, it takes some getting used to, but it still does its job well. Banjo Kazooie graphics uh, also didn't age too well, in my opinion, but it's still a little bit better than Super Mario 64. Super Mario 64 replay value is so much better than Banjo Kazooie, and here's why. In Super Mario 64, there's 120 power stars compared to Banjo Kazooie's 100 Ziggies. Now, you need at least 70 power stars 
to get to the final boss, which means that you have 50 extra power stars to collect after the game, and getting all that gives you, well, a appearance by Yoshi, which gives you 100 lives, which may sound kind of pointless at the end, but take t take into account that you can also replay missions, and it's an actual uh, gift that you can actually get compared to Banjo Kazooie, which I'll get to momentarily. I say Super Mario 64 at least reward you with something. Banjo Kazooie, on the other hand, not only do you need to collect jiggies, but also musical notes to reach the final boss. You need about 800, I believe. Now, to be fair, I don't find that annoying because the game is so fun that collecting stuff feels like it's part of the game rather than a chore compared to Donkey Kong 64, but I'll cover that later in another video, of course. But on paper, it does sound kind of annoying. But that's not the biggest problem with Banjo Kazooie. The biggest problem is, is after you beat the final boss, uh, the only replay value is collecting jiggies you haven't before and pretty much getting all the musical notes which um, access you to stop and swap which I'll get to a little bit later on uh, Banjo Kazooie doesn't give you the option to replay missions which well to be fair uh, both Super Mario 64 and Banjo Kazooie has multiple save files so if you want to do, redo another mission most likely you'd be playing a new game but I wish that Banjo Kazooie at least gave you the option to do the missions all over again now on to stop and swap. After you get 100 jiggies and all the notes, uh, pretty much you can get these items. Uh, I think only through a cheat code. If I'm um, digging correctly, even though I'm playing mostly the the original Xbox 360 version, which you see on the screen right now, uh, I'm talking more of the original Nintendo 64 version. Now. If that's the case, then there's actually no way to get these items and definitely no way to use these items on Banjo 3, which was originally intended. So, pretty much at least Super Mario 64 award you with something. Uh, this may be my nostalgia talking, but I still think Banjo Kazooie is a better game than Super Mario 64. That's when I believe when I f first played these games for the first time when I was like 12 or 13 and that's what I believe now. Now to be fair I think both games are great and you should give them both a try but I think Banjo Kazooie age much better even though I'm showing off the 360 version I played the original Nintendo 64 version and it still aged pretty well with better camera, better level design and well Let's say this, if it weren't for Super Mario 64 for help creating this formula, Own Deke River would have, you know, expanded to much greater heights. So, I will say this, I would recommend playing Super Mario 64 first so you can appreciate where it all started and then move on to Banjo Kazooie, which pretty much made Super Mario 64 better. I'm um, still a fact I'm going to get, you know, comments saying, you know, disagreeing with me, and that's fine, um, you feel free to leave those comments below, but keep in mind, I do, think, I do think that both games are great, and you should give them both a try, but I think Banjo Kazooie is the winner. This is me, Bobby Daddy 3 and i catch you guys later, see ya.